Okay, here we go. This is video number four, actually. It says three on some of the printed copies, but this is video four for chapter 13. It goes with section 13.6, and we're going to be writing equations in slope-intercept form. Okay, so here's our target. We want to be able to write equations in that slope-intercept form that we've been using throughout the chapter from both graphs and points, right? Like coordinate points. If I give you two points from a graph, could you use those to write the equation? Okay, so let's recap. Reminder, what is slope-intercept form again? Well, that's this equation or the form of writing an equation where we have y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is that y-intercept or where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so here we go. Our first examples, we're going to be writing the equation from a graph. Well, here's our steps. First of all, we need to be able to look at the graph and find the slope, right? So we did this a lot in section 2, 13.2. If you remember, slope is change in y over change in x. Or you might see it written as rise over run, or y minus y to get the rise, run, or uh, y minus y on top, x minus x on the bottom to get the run, right? But this is the way we're going to think about it most, change in y over change in x. Then we also need to look at the graph and find the y-intercept, find where it crosses the y-axis. And then put it all together. If you know the slope and the y-intercept, you can put it together here in your equation, y equals mx plus b. That's the slope, and b is your y-intercept. Okay, so we know we have to find the slope, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw my triangles here. This is what we did earlier in the chapter when we were getting slope from points on a graph. Remember, you can also use the formula. If you prefer just to look at the numbers in the coordinate points, you can use those as well. All right, so let's find this first slope. We know that it's change in y over change in x. So it looks like my y, I went down 3, and my x, I went over 4. So there's my slope. And my y-intercept here crosses at negative 2. So y equals m, negative 3 fourths x, and then minus 2 for your y-intercept. Okay, let's do one more. All right, slope, change in y over change in x. I'm going to do it up here. Looks like I went up 1 and over 4. Looking at my triangle here, right? And it's a positive slope, one-fourth. And if I find my y-intercept right there at 3, so y equals one-fourth x plus positive 3. All right, so I put my slope in here, and I put my y-intercept in here. All right, we've already got the triangles there. I want you to pause and write these equations. So hit play when you're ready to check those after you've done them yourself. Okay, here's what I got, a slope of 2, y-intercept of 2, slope of negative 4 thirds, y-intercept of negative 1. All right, so let's move on to example 2, writing equations from points. So now I have no graph to look at, I'm just using the points to get the whole equation here. All right, so find the slope. We know we're going to need that. Okay, so let's remember our slope formula. Well, change in y over change in x. But we can also say that change in y is really subtracting the y values and subtracting the x values. Okay, or rise, right? How much does it go up or down? Run, how much does it move over? Okay, and I'm going to put a little note here. Simplify, make sure your fractions for your slope are simplified. Okay. All right, step two, let's finish writing in our steps. Step two is going to be um, plug the slope and a point into your equation and then solve for B, solve for the Y intercept. So we're going to go over what I mean by that. Plug in the slope that you just found and a point, the x, y that they give you, and we're going to have to solve for b to figure it out. So really we need to find b is step two. 
Okay. All right. Once you have slope from step one, B from step two, put it all together. Put it in y equals mx plus b form, or put it into slope intercept form by plugging in the slope and the y intercept that you found. Okay? So let's see what that actually looks like. This can be a tiny bit complicated, so we'll do a couple together. All right, first step find the slope. Well, I like to find slope looking this way, right? My y went from negative 5 to 1. So my y changed, it went up 6. Change in x, let's see, from 7 to 3, it went down 4. And then we said to always make sure we simplify that. Okay, so first step, I got my slope, negative 3 over 2. Next step is to plug that in and a point and solve for b. So here's what we're going to do. y equals mx plus b. Well, I'm going to highlight it here. Where you see the y, I'm going to put a y value. Where you see the x, you're going to put the x value. And where you see the m, you're going to put your slope. So it would look like this. y equals mx plus b. Pick either point. Doesn't matter. Smaller ones, probably helpful. No negatives in this one either. So I'm going to remember that this is x and y, and I'm going to plug them in here. So y is 1. My slope was negative 3 over 2. My x is 3 plus b. Well, now you can see that I have an equation where I can solve for b. Right? Solve for b. I'm trying to figure out what b is. All right, so I'm going to get my calculator, and I'm going to type this in, or just do the work. This is 9 halves, right? Negative 9 halves. Well, to cancel it out and get b by itself, I'm going to have to say plus 9 halves. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. And 1 plus, this is 4 and a half, if I turn it into a decimal, I get 5 and a half. So I get that b is equal to 5.5, or 5 and a half. Well, if I write that all as an equation now, I have my slope, I have my b, and if I put it together, y equals negative 3 halves x and a positive 5.5. That's your equation. All right, let's see if I can do the next one in a little bit less room here. Okay, we'll do another one together. So, change in y, my y value went up 6. Change in x, my x value went up 6. Cool, that just gives me a slope of 1. Nice. All right, pick which point you want to use. Doesn't matter, but pick easier numbers if you want. So I'll use this point, and I'm going to plug it into my equation, y equals mx plus b. So the y value is 4. m, my slope, is 1, times the x is 3, plus b. And I'm going to solve that for b. This one's a little easier, no fractions here. Well, 1 times 3 is just 3. And solve for b, so minus 3. And I get that b is 1. Well, if I know my slope is 1, my b is 1, put it together in your equation, y equals x plus 1. So if slope is 1, you can put a 1x here if you want, but you don't have to. We know that's 1 times x plus 1. All right, so you've got one more here. All right, go ahead and... You try this one. Find the slope, and then plug it into the equation, solve for b, and then go back and write it as y equals mx plus b. So pause here, try this one. Okay, I wanted to go over just my slope first. I found change in y and change in x, simplified that, and I got a slope of negative 2. So now I'm going to put it all into my equation, y equals mx plus b. So it doesn't really matter here. Pick one of these points, I don't care. Put the y in, put the x in, put the slope in, and then solve for b. So do that before you hit play again. Okay, so to here I use these yellow points here. Plug in y, plug in x, work it out. I still have to get b by itself, minus 16. All right, I get b is negative 12. So my final equation, y equals, slope was negative 2 with the x, 
and then minus 12. Okay, flip it over. So now we just want to review a little bit of what we know about horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, so horizontal lines, well, if you think about them, they go this way. Horizontal lines have a constant y value. Okay, constant y value. And the slope, right, if I graph them, those horizontal lines, it's a flat line. We already calculated the slope of these earlier in the chapter. If I think about change in y over change in x, well, a cha the y doesn't change, so the change in y is 0. That makes all of these have a slope of 0. So m equals 0. All right. Well, if I write my equation, y equals mx plus b, but m is 0, this just drops out. Okay, and you get an equation that just says y equals whatever that value is, right? Whatever the y-intercept is, it's that same value everywhere. So your equations here are just y equals. Okay, what about vertical lines? So vertical lines go this way, right? The x doesn't change. They have a constant x value. Well, if they have a constant x value, then... First of all, there is no y-intercept, right? This is never going to cross the y-axis if it's perfectly vertical. And it doesn't matter what y is. Everywhere, x has whatever that value is. So your equations for vertical lines look like x equals some value. Okay? All right, so here we've got some practice. Let's go ahead and pause. And you need to finish these here, writing the full equation for those. Okay? So looking at these, well, we know to write the equation for any line, we've got to find the slope. So when I'm looking at the slope here, right away, I notice that my y value doesn't change. All right, if my y value doesn't change, when I go to write the slope, I'm going to get 0 on top, so the slope is 0. So my equation, that's the slope, right? But my equation would be, oh, hey, y is just going to be 7. All right, how about the next one? I notice my x's don't change. x is going to be negative 5. All right, x's don't change in the next one. x equals 4. And y's don't change here. So y equals negative 6. All right, so just be aware if you see points where you notice the x's are the same, or the y's are the same, you can write those equations as well, okay? So we're going to stop the video here. This will be um, some practice that we come back and do together. But after this video, you should be able to write equations in slope-intercept form from graphs and from points, okay? I know these down here will probably take a little bit more practice, but you have these to help you. We found the slope, right? We know how to find the slope. Then we had to plug things in and solve for b, and then we put it all together in the equation.